making rope swinging great again. Would you like to know if I actually can hang on to these? I want to know too. I do. How can you not watch the rest of this episode of How Not to Highline? Where do I, where do I, I get these ideas? Fun fact. I can't wake for it because the, the boat always pulls it out of my hand. Isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah! Held on! Yeah! 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 Woo! Woo! <laughs> that was, that was wild. Dude, you fucking held on. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks, and I'm in the middle of a big high line holding my cell phone. And it's scaring the shit out of me. Well, where I'm at is in Yosemite Rostrum, and what we're doing is we're going to put a rope swing on my Enov split. The Enov split is basically a soft shackle right here that is a figure eight shape another soft shackle clipped in it. We got lots of videos on that right now. I don't want to dive into how we connect that. But what I have here is an extra soft shackle I've already pre-done with a note on it that's already in this tight loop right here. This loop has the button knot and so I can easily fit something in here if I remove the tape. Um, and what I do is I'm going to put the rings right on top of this for our rope swing and uh, I'm going to put some velcro on this and the two extra soft shackles are going to stabilize that ring in order for it to only move one inch in either direction. And that allows us to only have to pad this much. We've been highlining on this for the last two hours and then we can just convert it to a rope swing and at any time if I wanna take these ropes off, I can uh, highline on here again. So it's kinda of nice if you're doing like 300 meter lines which opens up op lots of opportunity and you don't have to have a dedicated line with a rigging plate right here. So I'm gonna take off this tape and I'll show you the next step in a minute. Cheers. Okay, so I put Velcro right here and I taped it in place. The ring is gonna to wanna to be right here. You can see how it doesn't go back and forth more than this because this soft shackle keeps it from going too far that way. And this soft shackle keeps it going from too far that way. It's literally only moving this much. And because our high line goes that direction, it's gonna be pulling on this every time we swing. So, um, you can see here how they crisscross in order to keep it from uh, wanting to turn. And so this keeps it oriented. Matt Stolen gave me that idea of crisscrossing them when I was trying to problem solve that. Um, these soft shackles, I'm not gonna tape shut. Um, Oh, that got embedded in that tape. I guess it is tape shut. Anyways, um, you can see here how I label my stuff so you know what's what. And let's see here. So I'm gonna take off my leash now, which I am tied to, but I also have a personal anchor in this system. And I have a hangover, so I'm tied in two different ways. And I'm gonna take my leash off and I'm gonna attach the climbing ropes on here. And I'm going to attach a pulley on here so we can pull our jump ropes back um, but not the, not the uh, jumper. That's, uh, I think we have a better system for that, which we will show you. These jump ropes are, that is a figure eight with a traditional stopper bottom tile and a Yosemite finish. So my thing will be easier. I just pull this tail when I'm done. It makes tie, untying that knot a lot easier, which is kind of important when you're jumping on a ledge. This one I just did a Yosemite finish with my figure eight. These here are Velcroed where they meet the rings and then I just electric taped um, them in place. Um, and this way it just protects my rope from that contact point. These are two alumina, uh, two titanium rings by the way. Uh, they're a little bit bigger than my medium steel rings and I wanted the room. My knots are offset. You can see how my green one is higher than my purple one and that way they're just not competing for space. But I didn't want this purple one too low um, because we're gonna be jugging and this is gonna be our highest point that our jug rope will allow us to go. And we need to be able to clip our personal anchors to this 
once we get high enough to get off of our climbing ropes. Which brings me to this. This is not to haul people up. Uh, we're going to use a rope walker, tree arborist kind of um, foot ascender method. But this is for us to pull the climbing ropes back because to slide over with the climbing ropes and then back over on the 110 over there would be pretty difficult. So with that one carabiner, it is uh, orientated the way I want. And then you can see here my climbing ropes. Ooh, my legs are falling asleep. My climbing ropes are nice and tidy and organized. And then my haul line. I was just going to use a tagline, but this is what we had available. Um, and it goes up to our jump point. So we're going to exit off of this side and go wee. And our haul rope that you see is going to come over here. So we're just going to move it out of the way. And then we would jump and everything would be A-OK. -okay because these jump ropes would be here, off to the side. And this system would be over here. So... Uh, but what we would do, I call this my clothesline method, is um, I can attach my climbing ropes. I just tie a knot in this and then attach my the climbing ropes, the parts that is attached to me right here. I would untie that and clip it to this and then we would just pull it back over there. And the next person can get ready to jump while I slide off of the high line, which is um, only 45, 40 meters over to the rostrum. I am 50 meters away from the static side over there, which is um, why my enum splits right here. So now I'm all done. I'm just going to go back and we're going to throw a bag off, uh, which is very important to always go second. Daniel has volunteered to kick a bag of rocks for us. We have probably 100 pounds of rocks in here. We're going to set it just right there on the edge and then push it. We have two climbing ropes attached with a steel carabiner. And uh, what we're trying to test is not only if it holds, even though we know that'll happen, is we want to make sure the trajectory doesn't go out and then back and hits this wall. So rule with rope swinging is always go second. And we want to steer clear of that pile of rope because that is going to go... Okay, Daniel, go for it. And... And how's it look? Hey, okay. Is that does that mean I should start jumping? <laughs> Perfect. That's a that's nine to fourteen feet more than I needed. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure I hold it down while I while I jump so you can hear me go. Ah! <laughs> that way you know I'm scared. Are you on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good angle. It's a good, he likes the angle, guys. <laughs> a high angle, but angle is real important. Oh, look, my dino's still on. Okay, so we're at 2.86 kilonewtons at my peak, and I put all my, <laughs> this is my entire system right here, that soft shackle <laughs> taped shut on my valet loops, because I wanted the dyno reading, and soft shackles cannot uh, cross load. That was the thinking, but I was backed up to other stuff. It's also a fun experiment. Okay, so you're not supposed to jump with a soft shackle on your belay loop with a dynamometer at your face. But it worked really good for me, and we got 2.86 kilonewtons, and I only loaded one rope. Which, if you put a dyno on one rope and they both get loaded, you don't get a good reading. So, I liked my reading, it was a good reading, but he is not going to have a dyno, which makes this substantially easier. We have a figure eight here, because we know figure eights. This is at the very end of the rope, of a 60 meter rope. But, uh, to make it softer, we are doing a single rope, we were going to load only single rope. Because if you load both ropes, it's not as dynamic. So, uh, in order for this to hold him upright, he's using the chest harness. That's how we tied the bowline. This is just the bowline wrapped around. Okay, if you don't know how to tie bowlines, I'm not going to teach you here. Mostly because I'm not very good at it. 
<laughs> Ask Matt Stoling. He tied this. So, what else do you have on you? Because jumping is only a part of your journey. Yes, I am prepared to get back up. Got my ascender daisy chain, and then pocket aider, and another daisy chain, ready to ascend the blue. And what's uh, that system right. called? Ooh, big wall. Yeah. You're not. It's not the frog. Big wall. That's the big wall style. Big wall in it. Which is what he's trying to practice right now. You got a lot of stuff on you. He's got water. Yep. Got some water. Got some extra beaners. And got my hangover to get back. That's right. If you don't have a hangover to get back and you're going up yourself, that would suck. Here we go. Yeah. Oh my God. I thought he was practicing. <laughs> what are you doing right now? Ro rope rescue? It's rope rescue when you rescue ropes. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? Christian and Matt. <laughs> well, what happened to our ropes? We got all fucky. Okay, I think when you were jugging, you were putting the coils around you. Yeah, I somehow got And then you just clipped it to what they gave you and sent yeah, it over. I untied, I untied straight from my harness and clipped it on a uh, clove hitch to the uh, backup haul rope. Yeah. So what we need to do is drop the tails from now on, pull up clean ropes, and then clip it to the clothesline. Good thing we got Yosar helping. And they're super motivated because Yosar wants to jump next. My name is Yosar. <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm going to try a nice swan dive. Yeah. <laughs> What's... <laughs> None of us have exited the way we visualized our exits would be. Uh, good luck with that. Over here, more. Alonzo, are you ready? I'm ready. How are you tied in? Since we like to do it different every time. So today. <laughs> We did a big ass knot with both of the ropes in hopes to avoid twisting. Okay. And we're on the belay loop with two opposite and opposed beaners here. And I backed the whole system up with a figure eight through two tie-in points just in case, God forbid, my belay loop fucking blows. <laughs> at, at two kilonewtons? <laughs> at two kilonewtons, yeah. It won't, and, but... And then this is ready for your And this is ready for jogging. me to jog, yep. And your walkie is on. You got water. Um, I actually, you don't need this for a while, so you just... I'll just take it off and clip it out. Yeah, just okay. clip that. Um, undo your daisy so you don't uh, face plant the cliff. Two, one, scream! I think it's more fun for us than it is for him, because we don't have to jug now. How are you tied in? Because we like to do it different for everybody. Uh, I got like four carabiners and... Uh... A figure eight and, <laughs> and some more so so you go through first. your chest harness for both and then you got huh yeah. we'll see how that works out for you we'll find out you're tight in if you don't know knots tie lots yep there we go three two one yeah. <laughs> nice okay so daniel is right there and we are actually experimenting with a hull system so more people who don't know how to jug can come up the transfer line that brought our jump ropes back over to here, um, we dropped one side. It had a water bottle on it and it lowered it to him. And then the other end, we are pulling him up. What we have here is a 200 meter rope because that's what I have, even though 100 meters would probably be fine. And this is Lorenzo's contraption. So that's what's going to hold him, uh, protraction. And then it's redirected at the tree. And they just keep zigging and zagging it up the, up the trail. We just have to be careful not to have the hull jump or the the hull rope attached to the person when they're jumping. And Lorenzo is trying to keep my rope from abrading. Trying. Well, wait, my my edge roll. Oh, it's working perfect. Seems really manual. Well, I could leave it here if I wanted. No, don't let go. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we got everybody pulling, so that makes that makes this pretty easy. 
Especially if you're just the guy filming. Oh, he's coming up fast. Okay, so it's been a couple days, and let's go over things that we thought of since we've been home. First of all, let's recap a little bit. A Enov split is uh, goes through the sewing loops, but instead of just like normal, you go inside of itself and then over the top, creating this figure eight shape. This figure eight shape, if my fingers were sewing loops, allows us to put this smaller one inside here, down both ways, and this way it's redundant. If the main line were to blow, your backup is still embedded in the system. And we do 50 meter segments for our high lines now. Some people do 60 or 70, but mostly they're 50. And this allows us to do big lines without the risk of a main line failing at 300 meters or 1,000 feet. And that's dropping a long, long ways down before the backup engages. But now we can also use this method to put our rings on top of, like we showed you, and rope swing off of. Now, some segmented high lines have <clears throat> quick links that connect them together. And I don't know if I would set a ring right on top of that. It's just metal on metal like that seems a little gnarly. I'm sure if it was padded, it probably wouldn't be a big deal. But you also don't have your sewn loops very far apart, so it would be kind of hard to stabilize this. Um, I don't use quick links for my segmented high line, so I'm not even going to experiment with that. Kind of a neat system for this is that I have my long Enov split figure eight shape and my short one for the backup. Uh, if I just use one of each, I get the perfect distance in order to crisscross it to hold my ring. Now we have a lot of videos about the Enov split, so if you want to check out why we prefer it over other systems, you can check that out here. If you want to see us show you how to do it in the park, as an example, here. And if you want to see us brake test the entire thing on my Slack Zap machine, you can see that video down here. And then we also cut a 200 meter line to test it, and you can see that here. And we show you how to tape the whole thing together here, and how to do extenders and how long you need them here. So we have lots of videos about Enov splits. Check them out. All of my webbing is 50 meters now. I do not have a piece longer than that, but let's focus back on the rope swing. Now we did get a lot of twists in our rope. So I think next time I would be very, very tempted to put a swivel on each rope. That is technically still redundant. These are 36 kilonewtons and we're only getting three when at least I jumped. And we never do tandem jumps because it risks getting above 10 kilonewtons if the situation's just right. It's not worth losing the safety ratio that we work so hard to achieve by doing tandem rope swings. But anyways, I think this would eliminate a lot of the twists so the ropes wouldn't be so tempted to get wrapped around each other, causing most of our problems. Now please keep in mind to not base your safety ratios on one jump that I did on one rope swing. We did a whole video on the forces rope swings create at the Fruit Bowl in Moab, Utah, and you can see that video here. And it created six kilonewtons for some of our people. So there is a range of forces that we deal with, and it's not as straightforward as I consider highlining to be, which is anywhere between four and six kilonewtons all the time when we whip. Uh, rarely does it ever go beyond that. But you can't even get, you can possibly get 10 kilonewtons with a single person on a rope swing, depending on how little swing, your high line, things like that. Now we did brake test this Enov split rope jump idea before we even did it. And you can see that video here. And we would have to put about 30 kilonewtons on our rope in order to break our system. And ropes can't get 30 kilonewtons before they break. So I was really happy with the results because you do want your anchors, your system built like a pyramid. You want your anchors to be stronger than your web lock, your web lock to be stronger than your webbing, your webbing to be stronger than your leash. And in this case, it all was stronger to weaker, 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 and the ropes are the weakest point. Uh, why have a system that breaks 10 kilonewtons less than a rope, right? So I felt safe about this whole system, but I would again, never tandem rope swing. Now, you can look at our other video, which is here, about how we hauled people back up in, uh, to the exit point. 
In this video, this trip we just did, we hauled people straight up to the High Line, which is actually a pretty common method. However, it is, uh, can be difficult to reset the ropes, and that's what we had that uh, long clothesline for. And the other system, the other problem is people have to, uh, to slide off, which isn't that big of a deal, but it was a little steep on our High Line, and so it was difficult to get off. My favorite method is to bring the jumper back up to the exit point. And that way everything's just sitting there. You untie them and clip them into the next person. Uh, especially when you're dealing with uh, cliffs and walking around them a lot, uh, minimizing that can keep rope swinging safer. Because it's not just the rope jumper at risk, it's everybody managing all these ropes, especially if they're not clipped in. We try to be very careful about not touching ropes and not being near cliff edges without being clipped in but it's also very difficult to be like perfect on that all the time. Now here's some of the things we learned about this whole system of pulling people straight up is right now, as I lift this back and forth, that goes up and down. And it wasn't doing that for us because of the weight of this part. It was about over 100 feet and the weight of this would not allow that to go down. And we even tried to clip a water bottle to it and I realized like, oh my God, we were all clipping just the plastic loop of the water bottle and it's directly over the jumper's head. So if that part broke, and it does break, uh, it would mm, probably kill somebody. So anyways, in order to get that to go down, you, we still needed weight. What we did was we, when we reset, we pulled it back to us. And so when they jumped, and you can see this in our videos, we have two strands going here. And then once it was time to pull them up, we would drop this and it would drop about 100 feet, which is about halfway to them. And then that had enough weight that we could lower the, the rest of the way to them. Once they clip in, we just pull it. Now the teeth, the thing that grabs them, the progress capture device, uh, I, we used a protraction on that tree that you saw in the video. And, uh, and then we just used pulleys to zigzag it around. But anyways, in order to get the rope back, once we pull them up, we have to get the jump ropes to us and that tail. And this was the tricky part. So we would tie a knot and be like, oh, well, if we have this knot here and you pull it towards you, you can clip your jump ropes and we could bring it back. However, if you're going to clip the tail to it, it only comes halfway. Interesting how basic math works. So. Uh, in order to get it to us, we had to tie a knot way up here, then send it to them, or they would pull it in. They would clip the tail of this haul rope, because now they're tied into the high line safely, and the two jump ropes. And then we would pull that to us, but then once we got the jump ropes, it was all tangled. It was pretty difficult to deal with that, the twists. But anyways, we did work out the kinks in the system. This worked. It's okay if we were okay with pulling people straight up. Now, my goal is to jump off of 300 meter high lines right in the middle or wherever a 50 meter segment is that I like. I'm not really stoked on hauling people because I can jug a rope in 30 minutes and get back and then I'm done for the day and can go get in a hammock. However, if we're hauling people, everybody wants to jump, you end up spending your entire day working. So, let me show you my new favorite method. This is called the rope walker method, which is amazing because we walk on ropes. It's an arborist thing, so you can just literally use your feet to go up. I guess moving my feet doesn't help if the camera's not down there, but you get the point. This is a foot ascender. So it goes on your, you guessed it, your foot. And when you lift your foot up, it goes and then you can just have, you do baby steps. So you don't try to like do giant steps. Now I do like how this aider is nice and wide, whereas this one kind of hurt my foot because I was using a thin approach shoe and I have baby feet. Uh, but I like the adjustability of this uh, speed aider, I think they call it. And uh, then this sits at your knee. Otherwise, your, if they were both on your feet, they'd just be clinking and clanging each other. I'm not gonna use this bungee cord, but it's a good example you need to be able to hold this up. So I need to adjust my length still, but if my foot is in this, and you can just take my word for it that it is, as I step, 
it pull, this bungee cord supposedly pulls it up. And then I can just walk up this thing and this uh, ascender, this crawl, will go up with me and I would just take these steps. Now, this is really, really cool. Push in and lift up and you put your rope inside. Now, we did not rope swing with this as a chest harness because I really don't think that's what it's built for. And in case you can't tell, I jumped twice in this video and I had this and it was amazing in order to stay upright. I wasn't holding myself up at all. Now, these are not life supporting. I got no personal anchors on them. They're only on my feet. Now, if everything fell off, of me, I'm technically just rope swinging again, which not the end of the world, but safety first. I had one of these above my thing here, and I just kind of, I just put my hands on there just to help me guide. I also had to help this crawl up just because my system wasn't dialed yet. And uh, this is what my personal anchor was attached to. And that way, if I wanted to sit, because you can't sit in this system, I would just push this up and sit and rest. And this kept my chest close to the rope. I never felt tired doing it. Now, it does take me a few minutes to get up, so it's not fast. But the point of being radically self-reliant with a rope walker arborist system or a frog method or whatever you're doing is that you don't have to haul people up. And that frees everyone to highline more or rest or have fun. I don't believe people should be rope swinging unless they know how to ascend. It's not a consumer sport. I think people need to put a little skin in the game before they jump off cliffs on systems they don't understand. So I uh, can do some giant swings coming up soon. Make sure you subscribe so you can see them. They're gonna be pretty rad. And this is the method we're going to do. So uh, pretty excited about this. Pretty excited about the Enov split. I'm pretty excited even about the hull system that we did come up with, even though apparently I'm not big into hauling. Now, as far as the beginning of the video goes, this is pretty much what I was hanging on to. And uh, I did hang on. My personal anchors were clipped to the loops, but I did not load them. However, uh, the less glamorous side of things, which I do like to share here on how not to highline, is that when the rope went up, the carabiner went right next to my hand there. And what happened was, when it fell right there, this rope squeezed, like you would expect, and it squished that metal right up against my pinky. Uh, it's been a week. They don't hurt anymore, but it sucked. So uh, next time, I probably would just tie in with this tail if I wanted to be connected to this rope. But uh, I definitely don't recommend this because you don't know what kind of forces are going to do to your shoulders or your hands, and it could, it could really actually hurt you. Um, there's a couple factors here. It was 2.86 kilonewtons or 640 pounds of force. I don't know how I was able to hang on, but I knew from the feel of the previous jump I did with the dynamometer with that soft shackle that I knew I could do it. I don't understand the physics of how I can free fall over 100 feet uh, and kind of take that amount of shock, even though it's very absorbent, but it still created that much force. I don't know how I did it. I just knew I could. Uh, if you think you understand how, please leave a comment in the, in the comment below. Um, but it was kind of fun to see because how many rope swing fails have we seen on YouTube where people hit the edge of the water before they even swing over the water? And that's because there's no stretch in those ropes and they start with their elbows like this and it goes boom and rips it out of their hand. So, anyways, please don't try stupid stunts you saw on YouTube. Ever. Not just this, but ever. Anyways, I'll show you some clips of us glamorizing rope swinging, but while you watch these, please do not feel like rope swinging is safe. There's a lot of things that go into this. There's a lot of things I can't explain in videos. And when new people go with me, they don't know their head from their ass. So please go with somebody who knows what they're doing before you rope swing off your high lines. The biggest risks that happen are you hitting the ground because your rope is too long or are you swinging back into the cliff. Of course, your ropes and your system could break, but it's not super likely. But there are other dangers involved while we glamorize rope swinging in this video. Please don't take my lack of seriousness 
as a indicator that you should rope swing. It's me just trying to be funny after I put a hell of a lot of work into understanding the physics behind this. And clearly, I don't know the physics of rope swinging since I don't know how I even held on. So this shit is not safe. Therefore, you shouldn't highline or rope swing.